Hello and welcome to another ARC tutorial. Today we're going to be giving you 5 advanced tips that every player needs to know in order to be as efficient as possible on the ARC. These tips are for the individuals that already have some time on the ARC and are looking for more than just the basics. The tips in this list are in no particular order, but before we get into the video, I want to let you know I stream ARC every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8pm Central Time on Twitch. Links for that are in the description if you're interested, otherwise, let's jump into the video. Number 1. Procoptodon The Procoptodon is an entirely underrated dino in my opinion. These dinos have incredible utilities that a majority of players simply don't know about. While they have an incredible jump, a fairly decent kick attack that will knock back players and dinos, and have increased weight capacity compared to other dinos of their size, Procoptodons are mostly useful in breeding situations. So let's say you've just bred yourself an Anki and want to get the most out of it. You found that they require a lot of attention to get fully imprinted, and you just don't want to deal with it, but also want the boosts of imprinting. Procoptodons are the answer. When you put a baby dino in the pouch of a Procoptodon and imprint on it, the imprint affinity will double. This means if you usually imprint on a dino and get a 13% imprint affinity, Placing it in a mate-boosted female Procoptodon will give you a 26% imprint affinity. I have to be extra clear here. This only works on mate-boosted female Procoptodons, so if you're breeding multiple dinos, make sure you have several female Procoptodons to get this imprint boost. Additionally, a baby dino inside the pouch of a female mate-boosted Procoptodon will reduce its food consumption. Basically, Procoptodons are great moms. So for number two, we have beer. Who doesn't love a great beer? You might be thinking to yourself, Terrifier, beer has no purpose in ARC other than getting drunk and having fun. While part of that is true, gamer, beer absolutely serves a purpose. A few, actually. You know Chalicotheriums? Those mud rock and snowball flinging bastards that are super annoying? Beer is actually the only way to tame them aside from stimberries. Stimberries make the taming process incredibly slow though, so it's not recommended. Additionally, beer will give you increased insulation as well as pretty nice damage resistance. As with any alcoholic beverage in the real world, Beer and Arc will give you some negative side effects too. It'll deplete your stamina bar pretty quickly and once the buff is over, you'll get a hangover that won't allow your stamina to regenerate. Additionally, any stew effects will not be allowed to take place. So how can this help you? You can use beer in PvP situations to take reduced damage during a fight, since PvP encounters don't usually last very long. You'll be able to kill whatever you're trying to kill and flee before the debuff takes place. That is, if you're not some kind of noob that dies in every PvP encounter. <laughs> Who knew alcohol would be beneficial in a game? Drink responsibly, folks. I don't want to see any comments saying, I died from a Rex because I drank beer and couldn't run away. Use this at your own risk. Number three, Tech Dinos. Tech dinos are often overlooked when players are scurrying around the arc avoiding death at every turn. You can actually accumulate a large amount of valuable resources from massacring tech dinos like electronics, scrap metal, oil, and most importantly, element dust. There are some myths that tech dinos with more health will drop more element dust and other resources, however this isn't true. All tech dinos drop roughly the same amount of resources as the next tech dino. If you're looking to start raising tech dinos for an element farm, I recommend using a parasaur since they're easy to tame and raise and will drop roughly the same amount of resources as any other tech dino you may be interested in raising. You may be tempted to use your level 250 giga with 2000% melee damage to collect resources off of a dead tech dino, but understand you'll be missing out on a ton of resources if you do this. A chainsaw is by far the best way to collect element dust, electronics, oil, and scrap metal off of a dead tech dino. The yields are something like 200% better with a chainsaw than with another tool. However, my math skills are that of a second grader, so maybe, you know, don't take that exact percentage to heart. Anyway, stop panicking about element dust and just go kill some tech dinos, okay? Great. Moving on. Number four, rare flowers. Rare flowers made it to the list because their rare flower pheromones effect is highly underutilized. When was the last time you tried to tame a tapajara and it just kept flying away? If this has happened to you with a tapajara or any other dino that likes to quickly run away from you, consider using a rare flower to lead it into a trap. Upon consumption, the rare flower makes wild dinos around you aggressive and will attack you. This makes it really easy to lead the big dummies into a trap you've placed to quickly knock them out and begin the taming process. You have to be smart with this though, because if there are any other dinos in the area, they might also become aggressive and wind up in the trap as well. 
I mean, two for one in that case, right? But seriously, consider using these not only for recipes and crafting, but for taming. I know far too many players that don't even know that rare flowers have this capability. Be smarter than the Ark, gamer. I know you can. Number five, Ravager. Ah, the Ravager. The Ravager is honestly a pretty difficult dino to deal with. If you've played Aberration, you know that these guys can quickly put an end to your plans. Their bite will leave you bleeding, and since they mostly travel in packs, they can quickly overwhelm you. However, if you're able to tame one, understand that it's potentially one of the best things you can do in the game. Not only are the Ravagers a powerful mount, but they can also travel across zip lines with ease. They can jump from zip line to zip line, as well as hang upside down on them and sprint up and down them. They're incredibly good tames for mobility, but the reason they made this list is because of their ability to take resources for halfway. When wood, fungal wood, thatch, metal, green gems, fiber, crystal, obsidian, and stone are placed in their inventory, it'll weigh 50% less. This means that while you're traveling, you can also collect high value resources and carry them back to your base quickly and easily with minimal risk. Additionally, Ravagers can be carried by Quetzals and Argies, making them one of the most useful dinos in the game. My personal favorite for collecting resources is a Quetzal with a platform saddle to carry an Anki and Ravager, then using the Anki to gather the resources and placing those resources in the Ravager. Unless, of course, that resource is metal, since the Anki takes metal for 75% weight. I can't overlook the pack bonus that Ravagers get as well. The pack buff applies when Ravagers are in a group of three or more and will give them increased damage output, as well as increased damage resistance. Overall, the Ravager will be one of the best tames you can get in the game in my opinion. So why not go out and become the most efficient player the Ark has ever seen? These tips will make life on the Ark exponentially easier and will impress other players with your knowledge of the game mechanics. Make sure to share this video with your noob friends so they can become as good as you, too. If you found this content helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more ARC tips and tutorials. Friendly reminder that I stream ARC every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 8pm Central Time on Twitch. I would love to see you there. Thank you so much for your time today, we'll see you in the next video.